do the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Thank you. Blessings of grace to you. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want us in one minute to just speak over all the men, all the fathers following from any and every nation, house on the rock, the south, south, in one minute, just pray, pray. You've got a husband, a brother, a friend, a father, pray. Lord, we speak grace over the men we speak grace over the fathers are you praying let it be from the depth of your heart when the devil wants to destroy society he destroys men lord we decree and declare you are raising men of stature men of power men who will live to enjoy the fruits of their labor Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The name Father comes from the word Abba. Abba means source, sustainer, defender. A father is not one who has children. A father is one who has entered into the covenant of responsibility. The hallmark of fatherhood is not the presence of another child from you. It is responsibility are we together so we are going to pray just one more prayer for the men Lord let this be a season of reward for the silent tears believe what you are saying and pray it from your heart go ahead and pray father let this be a season of reward for the men take your eyes away from what you think they have not done or not done enough we thank you we pray for the men in this church and we announce that is your season of reward we pray for the men the fathers all over the south south we pray for those following some crying some stretching themselves from border to border to see that they communicate responsibility lord we pray that you arise for them let this be a season of reward in the name of jesus men fathers i stand in faith with your pastor over this house and we speak the blessing upon you in the name that is above all names i prophesy psalm 112 the bible says blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed and he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever may that be your lot and your portion in the name of jesus christ the lord satisfies you with long life and gives you peace in the name of jesus you are far from oppression you are far from trouble job said he will deliver us from six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men we decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper and that every tongue that rises up against you let it be judged before your eyes in the name of jesus christ go from strength to strength go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray amen god bless you happy father's day 
Thank you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. This will be our final session here at this conference. And I believe that what you are about to learn will truly change and bless our hearts. It's not limited to pastors. This morning, the Lord wants to speak to us and edify everyone who cares to listen. Judges chapter 6, please. We'll read from verse 12 down to 14. Judges chapter 12. I want to talk a bit on the mystery, the principles that make for advancement. Go in this thy might. Judges 6, 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. 13. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Father, help us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Just, just a bit of the volume. Praise the name of the Lord. It is God's desire that we make progress and we advance in life. Please pay attention. The Bible declares that the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Psychologists tell us that the secret to fulfillment is progress. That you find fulfillment to the degree to which you perceive that you are making progress stagnation is evil because it has a feedback mechanism it continues to let you know or think or believe that you are not making progress are we together when a woman gives birth to a child nothing wrong with the child crying and crawling from day one but after a few months they begin to look for signs of progress is that true in spite of the discomfort that comes with the progress they are happy and they rejoice when they see the child attempting to walk attempting to talk now they know that child is progressing if after a year or two it looks like certain features that should be captured in his or her life at that time are not there it becomes a source of concern for the parents everyone rejoices at progress so it is God's desire that we move forward. And we have a narrative in the body of Christ that if not balanced can destroy us. We feel just because our ultimate desire is to love Jesus, to serve him, we communicate a narrative that even whilst you are failing and stagnated, provided you love Jesus, it is all right. That is not the whole counsel of God. There is only one thing better than the truth, the whole truth. Truth that is limited can be destructive. We must embrace the whole counsel of God. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, But I am come that ye may have life. That's a level. And says to have it more abundantly. Abundant life means your relationship with Jesus being intact alongside an excelling life, garnished with a plethora of victories. That's abundant life. So we must not embrace the narrative that makes it look like once we are doing well spiritually to hell with whatever else happens in our lives. No, in order of priority, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ should be the focus. However, whilst we love him and seek him and serve him and live for him, we must be reflections of his victory. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can no one will who can stand against our king no one can no one will 
of that victory if it is true that jesus died defeated death hell the grave satan triumphed over them and resurrected if it is true that he is exalted seated today as both lord and christ something in my life should capture that expression if it is true that i'm his son his daughter so do not reject advancement and progress do not reject an excelling lifestyle here's what the bible says john 15 and verse 8 it says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples galatians 1 verse 24 and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in and through a man god can be glorified in and through a man he says let your light so shine he says permit that light to shine before men he wants it to shine before men that they might see your good deeds and glorify your father what in heaven are we still together exodus chapter 14 please and verse 15 this was the exodus of israel from egypt moses had come to challenge pharaoh and finally pharaoh let the people go by the mighty outstretched arm of god but now they were faced with the red sea before them the nation of israel running after them and moses was afraid he had come the people like every wise leader should and would and now he went to the lord to bring that issue lord what am i going to do with these people now and then it says verse 15 please exodus 14 verse 15 and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Let me speak to someone here. In the name of Jesus, by reason of this conference, I stand by the spirit of prophecy and I move you forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, that they will come to you where they met you yesterday and find an empty grave an empty realm because you have transited in power in grace and for some of you you will not just go forward you will run forward in the name of jesus christ please sit down first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 every time you see a man move in this kingdom it is not by the strength of the flesh it is not by might it is not by power please read with me if you are a christian ready read want to read and samuel said unto the people it is the lord that advanced moses and aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of egypt that means when you see people make progress in this kingdom behind the enviable destinies and results in ministry in business in politics in family life behind the strange advancement of men is an invisible but powerful god moving them forward it is the lord that advanced moses and aaron it looked like they were just moving by their intelligence but it was the lord behind that advancement hallelujah i think i should have mentioned it in this church that the power of god is experienced at three levels we can experience the power of god at three levels the first level is the level that comes through encounters when you have a direct encounter with the lord there is a measure of his power that is released into your life by reason of relationship that comes through encounters are we together the bible is full of men and women who met with the lord and had supernatural encounters and with those encounters came power superior dimensions of spiritual power the second level and dimension of god's power is experienced by engaging principles with understanding there is a dimension of god's power that is vested in principles 
you do not need a relationship with him to enjoy that level of power all you need is an understanding of how the principles work and the fortitude to engage them the law of sowing and reaping the law of diligence all of these are principles that can be applied by all and sundry you do not need an encounter nor a relationship with the god that backs the principle if an armed robber and a terrorist plans well his plan will come to pass even though it is an evil plan are we together yes because planning is a law and there is a dimension of god's power every law that works works because the power of god is behind it backing it once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the lord so when god supplies his power he can give you directly through encounters and then number two he can grant you spiritual illumination so that you access levels of his power by engaging principles spiritual principles and principles of life number three the third level um that gives us access to god's power is covenant alignment our alignment to men and women who have a covenant with god there are people on earth who by reason of the election of grace or the sacrifice of alignment have found their place in, in positions where god entered personal covenants with them and there is a deposit of his power that comes through the platform of that covenant you can align with their covenant through honor and discernment and you become benefactors of the grace that comes if god has entered a covenant of prosperity with a man you come under that grace even before you learn the laws of wealth you will find out you are getting blessed because there is a supply these are the three levels so when the bible says god advanced moses we have to investigate the power that moses had to advance was it just through an encounter through engaging principles or covenant alignments are we together success in this kingdom is largely through the understanding and the application of kingdom principles now you have to understand that in this kingdom we rise by light on the strength of light i went up by revelation paul said isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light it takes knowledge superior knowledge to reign in life this is where the wisdom of the word is by me kings reign the bible says and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness we have to pant for knowledge exact knowledge that produces predictable results if your results in this kingdom are not predictable you'll be afraid of them because you suspect they will not last and you are right so paul says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake no there is a level of success that is no longer an issue of trial and error you trade principles are we blessed i want to share with us very quickly within the time that we have four principles that god uses to advance men whether in ministry in business in every aspect of your life i give you a guarantee in the name of the lord as we wrap up this conference these principles will truly make you armed and then will make you dangerous as far as the extent of the results that you produce the bible says the lord will bless you and the nations will fear him not that they will praise him they will start by praising him then they will transit into a level of fear what manner of a god is this there were things that jesus did in the bible they didn't praise him people ran away others were afraid and said what kind of a man are you was it not once upon a time they called paul and barnabas zeus and hermes these were greek gods when you study classical greek mythology these were greek gods that were an aberration between spirit beings and women and they believed that these men had superhuman powers when they saw paul and they saw the way they were carrying out the apostolic ministry they said you're not pure humans 
may that be said of you that people will look at your life and they will marvel and wonder and said what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him predictability in this kingdom comes when we understand and engage kingdom principles they are called mysteries matthew 13 and verse 11 jesus in one of his mentorship sessions teaching the disciples in what we call the beatitudes exposing them to the kingdom and the way the kingdom operates he says for it has been given unto you to know the mysteries a mystery is a hidden code of operation that is privy to a group of people it is it is the secret formula that causes a group of people to excel predictably they are called mysteries and the Bible speaking about the Holy Spirit said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus was telling them. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Are we ready this morning? Four principles that make for an excelling lifestyle. In ministry, you want to excel. In business, in career, in leadership of all sorts. Number one, vision the first biblical principle that is responsible for the fearful advancement of men is vision proverbs 29 and verse 18 please let's hurry up so that we gain time proverbs 29 and verse 18 the bible says where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he a version says where there is no vision the people cast off restraint where there is no vision the people perish so vision is literally the lifeline for continuity for living where there is no vision the people perish it is true there are so many people who have not been able to define that which they desire god to do in their life teaching us jesus was teaching us how to pray and here's what he said he said when you pray say this our father who art in heaven your name your kingdom come your will be done in earth as it is in heaven then he says when you pray be intentional give us this day mention the date what our daily bread don't just say increase me don't just say move me forward give me this day our daily bread vision what is vision a picture and a representation of where you intend to go a picture of the future a wise man would say vision a picture a clear representation of where you intend to go because you see the way god designed the mind to walk is that until there is a pictorial representation of where you want to go the mind does not become active over that issue are we together so for instance pastor will tell you and many other leaders here people come to meet you and here's what they say pastor my life is not going forward things are not happening and you ask them what exactly is the problem they say everything you see that kind of lamentation will only lead you to recycle pain in your life because there is no there is no pathway there is no intention to make progress there are pastors like that you ask them so what are you doing they say i'm preaching the gospel who are you what has god called you to do what is the limit and the jurisdiction of your work i just know that god called me i read from scripture go ye into all the world you are not the only one he gave that command to it's a great commission he gave everybody that commission so believing that that's what will make members come to sit down and listen to you is a joke there has to be clarity there has to be specificity of vision when jesus came his manifesto was clear he didn't waste his time listen i am here for this reason the spirit of the lord god is upon me he read his messianic prophecy in luke chapter 4 when he read it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears when john came they asked him who are you and why are you here he said i'm the voice of one crying my assignment is to identify the christ and announce him when he was done his ministry was over unfortunately he got into other aspects that god did not ask him to do and queried people over their marriage found himself in prison died as a beheaded prophet 
are we blessed when moses came and met pharaoh the first thing he told pharaoh was why he was there listen pharaoh i've not come to negotiate i've not come to receive a bribe i am here on assignment here is my assignment i was sent from the backside of the mountain to come to you to advocate an exodus to take god's people from egypt this land of captivity into canaan a land flowing with milk and honey miles and kilometers away but he was clear on that he sold that message to them joseph excelled in scripture because he already saw the end he had a vision that came through a dream father i slept and i saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bowing and jacob looked and said wow are you saying you have a destiny of royalty that one day you'll be seated in an exalted position that myself your mother and your brothers will bow nimrod kush in genesis 11 the bible says when he wanted to build a tower the first thing was he sold a clear vision he says go to come let us build mortar let us do this and let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens to the end that we make a name for ourselves and the people say we're together with you no one will follow you when they are not clear on where you are going not even yourself jesus did not just say give your heart to me and remain moving around look at his manifesto i know you love him for who he is but what about heaven what about the streets of gold what about the fact that tomorrow you'll be rewarded why will a man bow his back to be beaten on earth just like that no there is a picture that gives you that motivation the bible says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross he despised the shame are we still together vision we must challenge ourselves to return back and make our visions very clear why do you exist where are you going in clear terms god has called me to be an evangelist to the nations you may say okay so what is the scope and the jurisdiction of your assignment i agree that our mandates are seasonal there are times that god will give you a seasonal mandate and it unfolds but let it be that for every time and every season you have something directing your life there are many fathers and husbands respectfully today's father's day congratulations but many people continue to recycle pain because there is no vision even for the home they just found themselves as a result of advancement in age with a wife and children and they don't know the name of what they are doing now they have children now they have a wife where are we going to what end was concerned but the issue that is strangling the ministry is the area of finance every area of pain in your life is the area of darkness go for knowledge go for knowledge go for knowledge you can easily use pain pain is a letter from your future that i am there but this version of you cannot arrive there pain is a gift from god that helps you know that there is darkness in this area so if you are excelling in the area of prayer you are excelling in the area of fasting but you are failing financially it may be time to sit down don't just say god bless me find out how the economic system of the kingdom operates apostle i've tried and tried this anointing thing is it that god cannot give me <clears throat> the parable of the virgins is the solution for you it says go to them that sell and buy there are people who have been given custody go to them not just go to god go to them that sell there are people who are giving custody of that oil. Go to them that sell and buy. Yes, you are a virgin. But the door will soon be closed against you. Because there is no oil. Go to them that sell. The person you are looking for has already given them that sell. Are we blessed? Please, you must trust God. That after this morning service, you don't just rejoice and share the grace and dance back to your house, recycling your current realm. You must look at where you are today and wave it goodbye and say, I'm tired of this. I have compassed this mountain long enough in ministry, in life. How about influence? Sadly, we could not touch on church growth yesterday in detail. There are secrets and there are principles. People don't just come to listen to you just because you have something to say. No. No. 
there is there are dynamics to this thing listen every time you see mastery don't dishonor it and don't pretend it is not there mastery is proof that principles have been kept the patterns of God are what controls his glory the glory of God will always come to honor his patterns when you see the glory of God in a man's life financially when you see the glory of God in a man's life in terms of leadership it is proof that the patterns that control that result have been kept there are women here that cook very well your region is known for delicacies of, of all sorts there are women here right now if we say cook for everybody who came here they will not be afraid all they want is time and the resources to go to the market they can guarantee that in the next three to five hours we'll all be smiling here that's mastery as anointed as i am if you give me that kind of assignment you will know that he gave on to some apostles some caterers some chefs we have we have this attitude of disdain in our world we see people with sustainable results and believe they were just lucky i think they are just lucky he stumbled across an anointed man pastor Larry is just lucky i'm sure maybe it's just opportunity no no mastery mastery is proof that you are operating by laws you can have short-term success that is true but you can you can have continuous effortless success look how long jesus has been reigning look how long god has been on the throne does that look like a mistake kings reign for seasons and he brought them down so when we worship him we don't just worship him because he is god we worship him because he is old we respect the laws that govern the throne he's seated upon why do you think he's called an ancient of days time is part of the reason why we worship him the reason why we have a healthy respect for the devil is not because he's bad we don't worship him but we we appreciate the fact that he's called that old serpent time there is knowledge good or bad that comes with time so the bible says even though you are in christ do not be ignorant of the devil's devices time has given him an advantage he has mastered people he's seen kings come and go he studied man as a project light this morning is an exhortation so let's go straight number three are we ready the third key that makes for an excelling lifestyle you want to advance you want to go in this your might number three you must sustain superior belief systems a transformed mind superior belief systems three scriptures very quickly proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 proverbs 23 and verse 7 for as he thinketh in his heart interchange for mind the bible says so is he not so he will become you already are what your mind is listen mindsets are very very powerful they are very important i wish i had time to walk this psalm 78 and verse 41 the psalmist was teaching us about the events that happen around the exodus of egypt psalm 78 and verse 41 he says yeah they turned back and tempted god scary scripture and limited the holy one of israel how can a man limit god god who is unlimited the mindset of a man can limit God listen let me tell you this our belief systems represent our perspectives our viewpoints our ideologies our planes of judgment they come from number one our culture number two our past experiences number three our levels of orientation number four our relationships number five our sociology there are poisonous aspects of our belief systems that we must change this is one of the hardest assignment of the holy spirit in the life of a believer to convince you that there is a superior belief system other than the one that you have you must obtain grace to be disloyal to every faulty and inferior belief system because your destiny is at the mercy of transformation 
the bible says in romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god he says that he offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of service or worship then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age he says but be ye transformed like an insect goes from egg lava pupa to adult you can transit to a more superior version of yourself can i tell you the tomorrow you are praying for has come to pass you many times it didn't identify you because the version of it it was instructed to come to you have not evolved into it yet so every time god gives you a prophecy find out what version of you that prophecy was sent to come to we remain in our yesterday and tomorrow keeps looking for us and does not find us because it was not yesterday's you that tomorrow was sent to meet the throne was not sent to meet the one who walked on the earth the throne was sent to meet the one who had died and resurrected and now is seated psychologists tell us that we attract to our lives the realities that are consistent with our thoughts this is not some 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 diabolic things it is true success is not just what you do success is what you attract by who you are becoming more than what you do is your becoming daniel eleven thirty two. 32 but the people that do know it starts with knowledge the people that do know their god they shall be so knowledge transformation and then execution knowledge transformation they shall be strong then in that state they will do exploits there is a mindset that you can have and you will never cross 100 members 200 members we're not saying crowd is everything there is a mindset for a global ministry there is a mindset for territorial dominion not just an anointing the anointing comes in honor to the belief system your assignment in this conference is to obtain grace from god to begin to transit to inculcate superior belief systems i didn't come from a background that would afford me cheaply to have these belief systems i had to begin to outsource it through passion the proof of passion is pursuit when you really are passionate you will pursue are we together jeremiah 6 verse 16 says to stand in the way and to ask for that ancient path and he says when you have found it walk in it is a good way and he says you will find rest for your soul Man of God is not always a demonic attack. Mindsets are doorways and gateways that allow the devil to oppress us. The only gateway that gives the Holy Ghost and demons access to your life is your mindset. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, Now unto him, the Bible says, who is able, so his ability is not in doubt. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly all that we ask or think. You've listened to my message on this why some of you god listens to both your asking and your thinking your mindset is also a prayer warrior it's not only your mouth that prays your mind is also asking god to do things your prayer can be saying god lift me and your mindset says god forget about it the mouth does not know what he's saying and the bible says god is able to honor both what we do or think there could be a problem with our thinking a lavish respectfully speaking western thinking is not transformation your transformation only happens when you begin to align your understanding referenced to scripture not referenced to another region that is technologically advanced than your current nation no you can have another mindset that is higher than your current mindset but that does not mean you are transformed transformation is reference from scripture and the character of the christ so if you are transiting into something else that we cannot find the bearing from scripture you may be moving but you are not being transformed there are people who travel to regions that are 
maybe more superior than nigeria and they learn the culture there and they return back believing they are transformed no sociologically speaking those regions may seem to have a, a more a more consistent approach as far as its relation to scripture is concerned but it may not directly honor scripture when we talk about transformation we are not meaning embrace a mindset that is higher than a village mindset no we are saying conform to scripture as reference there is god's modus operandi there is a way he walks are we together transformation you will attract realities that are consistent with your belief systems you will attract relationships that are consistent with your belief systems you will attract opportunities that are consistent with your belief systems where do great people come from they are attracted by holding the mindset you see there is every there are physical blessings allocated by default to mindsets you don't choose things you choose mindsets the mindsets choose the possibilities that come you want good friends you want the contact in your phone to change you don't do it by looking for people manually no you do it by looking for the mindset that reflects the relationships you are looking for the moment that mindset changes your contact will begin to change in honor of it how many of you have given someone a shirt that you've used for a long time clean shirt you use it for two years we didn't even know that the shirt was two years old suddenly you give someone maybe a house help or someone and in two weeks the person's mindset starts telling on the shirt you can buy a car for someone in two weeks the car will start looking like the man's thinking you can give someone a house this is the fallacy of empowering people without transformation sooner or later you will see this is why no matter how blessed you are train your children they are not empowered you will give them things that will look like them with all due respect keep a security man for instance who works in a company and would complain that i'm earning only thirty thousand or twenty thousand and my boss is there receiving a million or two million naira what is he doing sipping tea and sitting under ac i always give a challenge switch them switch them put the boss at the gate for two weeks and put the security man in the office let me tell you the first thing he would do most likely with all due respect and honor not everybody but generally speaking most likely he will steal he will go to the fridge first not the files what does he have to do with files to him what are files the contracts that's none of his business he will pack something in the fridge quickly he will enjoy the ac to reaffirm that he's there in three days the office starts looking like him it's dirty it's unkept he will use a file containing a million dollar contract to help and pour and pour uh, hold granites that is coming from the cover with it now let's go to the boss who is at the gate the first thing he's going to do is how to reduce physical energy in opening that gate he will laugh with someone to automate the movement of the gate because his health is a priority for him he can't stand in the sun from morning till night opening and closing it will affect him so he will say how much will it take and he will tell the person i don't have money to give you but let's get into partnership the rewards that come from this i will automate it and begin to charge the people a stipend that's how i'll start paying you his mindset very soon nobody will come to that office again everybody's problem will be stopped will be solved at the gate so who are you really paying a man or a mindset are we blessed listen i wish i were lying i would have just said i'm sorry but what i'm saying is true and powerful philippians 4 8 finally brethren the bible says whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things don't say i come from port Harcourt. no we've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation there are very healthy aspects of culture moral excellence respect but there are destructive superstitious aspects of culture that keep
begging us and not even just because we are educated to be educated means to be enlightened along a field of endeavor it does not generally mean that you have the understanding for living are we blessed there is a mindset you have that will make you will never have more than two million naira in your account if it's more than that your mindset interprets it as an error events will happen and it will reduce it back to the amount that looks like your mindset then you will rest have you seen people like that Ten thousand. i'm not i'm not we're talking are you are you understand now we're not marketing flesh here ten thousand fifty thousand hundred thousand and then your mind says that's your realm suddenly a miracle happens two million and your mindset beeps it says something is faulty because this man is sustaining more than the mindset allows events will happen through carelessness to reduce you back to that realm so when you are saying god lift me it's not just impartation you must grow you can grow to a level where your current house will leave you it will push you out you don't have to say i need a new house no just grow you grow to a point where it becomes unfair for you to live there you don't have to fake it just grow a time will come the house will start speaking to you a time will come your phone will start speaking to you a time will come your car will start speaking to you not by you wanting to move just grow growth is the real key to success your becoming is greater than your doing do from a standpoint of becoming and you will truly be excellent are we together my time is almost up can you spare me five minutes and we're done are you getting blessed in this morning service i want you to leave angry knowing that i'm i have to go forward and now it's not just shouting and say lord i'm going forward amen <clears throat> oh i see what i'm doing wrong now many years ago i was tired of this finance thing because it was really really you know that thing can cripple you no matter what god has called you to do if if you don't have resources i hate poverty for one reason not just because it's bad or it's associated to the devil it's because of the limitation that it causes as far as your advancement and the purposes of god if poverty were neutral i won't have a problem with it now i saw i went to study wealthy people and when i got their books i became angry i wanted to find out what businesses they were doing so i would do it but all what they were writing there is attitudes behave well mindsets and i said Haba, these people you are not being fair you are already blessed you want to help people and the focus is on mindsets tell us the truth what are you doing what did you do that made you a billionaire how foolish i was they were giving their very best this is what many people do when they see wealthy people what are you doing just tell me so that i will do it too you will do it and still fail because they are doing it from a mindset the real miracle next time you are mentioning the miracles of the bible mention the miracle of understanding it is a miracle you want to be a man of god that god gives you there are anointings over assemblies there are anointings over cities there are anointings over regions there are anointings over nations there are anointings over continents all of these anointings are not just governed by the will of god they are governed by levels of superior beliefs god cannot give you an anointing over nations and continents when there is a belief system in you one message coming from that poor belief system can bring trouble to the body of christ from a continental standpoint so god will not give you that kind of anointing you do not have the flexibility you have not learned leadership at the level that can galvanize people from several cultures you cannot have that anointing are you blessed <laughs> number four what is the fourth key go in this your might key number four the power of value and productivity the power of value and productivity mark chapter 1 please and verse 35 we made reference to this yesterday whilst we were discussing church growth at the pastor's conference the bible says jesus having done all the things he did in the preceding verses in the morning rising up a great while 
before day he went out and departed into a solitary place the bible says and there prayed next verse and simon and they that were with him followed after him and when they had found him here's what they said they said unto him all men seek for you oh may that be your testimony when men seek for you they don't come alone they come with everything that represents them they come with their achievements they don't seek for you just with their bodies or their eyes they come with their wealth they come with their honor they come with their loyalty they come with the leverage of their sacrifices they come with their relationships their connections all blessings come from God through men to men men are the bridge for our rising and our advancement you have to learn this these are irrefutable principles of advancement you have to be valuable you know you are valuable by who seeks you if kings look for you you are valuable enough I made up my mind as a covenant to myself and my destiny that in every area God would have me serve his purposes I would give myself no rest till I rise to a point of competence and value value what does it mean to be valuable to be valuable means it's a measure of your usefulness is the it's a measure of your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful as far as a dispensation is concerned to be productive means to sustain the ability to be valuable refine that value and turn that value into products and services that are needed and useful serve to a targeted consumer base that's what you call business is simply a channel for dispensing value intelligently no most people believe men of god don't know any other thing aside from preaching the holy ghost did not come to waste his time in our lives are we blessed you're not valuable you can pray in tongues you can do the things that you have to do you will be greatly limited in this life all men seek for thee that's the power of value all men seek for thee all men seek for thee exodus chapter 4 please let's look at verse 2 we're about to pray exodus chapter 4 i hope god is speaking to us hmm. when moses had an encounter with the lord one of the questions that the lord asked him was moses what is in your hand and he said a rod verse 3 he says cast it to the ground he casted it it became a serpent and moses fled before it then verse 4 the bible says and the lord said unto moses put forth your hand and take it by the tail he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand when you read subsequent verses for the sake of time verse 7 particularly go to verse 7 please for the sake of time and he said yes when he put it he became you know we plucked it out from his bosom the hand became this and that and later on he told him he said this rod now you hold on to it this is the rod wherewith you will do signs and wonders signs and wonders when he got to the sea the red sea it was that same rod that he brought out that parted the red sea in second kings chapter 4 when you read the first 10 verses just right for reference the bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet who was in debt and they were about to take the creditors were about to take her children as collateral she cries to a prophet who tells her what do you have in your house she said nothing except except and the oil was listening to her you call me except is the container that made me in this condition i am not small the oil was sitting in the house and saying madam you have the opportunity to be so great but you have confined me in a little container the prophet said i know what the problem is don't borrow oil again you have enough go and borrow vessels expand your capacity it says borrow not a few when she borrowed she brought it as she began to change the container the oil started expanding to assume the container and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped are we blessed 
make up your mind to be valuable how do you know that you are valuable when you start serving the kings in your territory if the kings have not called you you are not valuable enough i guarantee you in any business you are doing do not rest until you serve the kings and the nobles not by faking it and some of these things people do don't fake what can be real pay the price and grow value apostle i'm a master chef i'm a cook who is patronizing you when you serve kings you will reward you will receive the rewards that the palace gives everything you are doing someone is doing it the reward comes from who he is serving not just what he is doing many years ago i went to a very nice hotel and we wanted a i think it was a bottle of minerals or coffee and i had an evil report as to how much they said that thing was ah. I said i can't believe this what in the world is this why should i take a, a, a i mean come on when you can go out and just trek to a shop as hey, is give me coffee and cup give me i'm buying cup i'm buying spoon everything there plus the water and heater you can buy everything and make the tea there you are not just taking tea you're paying for the atmosphere because whoever sees you there assumes you have transited to their level so he will relate with you based on their level that's what you are paying for i was glad when they said unto me see why it's good to come to church you come and learn life applicable lessons you can use this to your company go back tomorrow and call your staff and say look we've been recycling this level of profit i had my pastor teach after this conference we are going to change it now listen to me gentlemen all these faded uniforms they are going out of this office we are going to redefine ourselves we are going to paint that old building and start looking like our future indeed and with every sense of seriousness we are going to introduce ethics and practices in this firm that reflect the kind of people we want to come excellence is a language there are people who can speak it if you if i speak yoruba now there are a few people who hear what i'm saying excellence is a language there is a tribe that understands that language hmm. value and productivity second king seven we have to stop i'll just give you the last two points and then we'll pray another time when god grants grace remind me that i didn't finish the lecture <laughs> amen and amen first king 7 13 first king 7 13 shilakatos kabrendeketi balakatuya a construction project is going on here the building of the temple and solomon sent and fetched a gentleman called hiram out of tyre the then business hub next verse the bible gives us a very pathetic description about this young man so what was it in him that made the king to send for him the bible says he was a widow's son of the tribe of naphtali and his father was a man of tyre a worker in brass and he was filled with wisdom understanding and cunning to walk in all works of brass and he came to the king and wrought all of his works he came to the king even though his background was that he was a widow he made up his mind that i will get wisdom i will get understanding i will transit to a point where if solomon is asking for the best they will call my name this is not an unhealthy competition but make up your mind in the name of jesus christ that when they are looking for people who are serving the purposes of the kingdom in ministry in business that with all humility and and to the glory of the name of the lord you will be called as a reference as one who truly represents the purposes of god if you're with me say amen, amen. the enemy of your next level is where you are not where you left where you are you can be so satisfied with where you are that there is no need to move forward forward thinkers champions those who continue to to to
trailblaze and those who continue to advance there are people who part themselves but not for too long when they part themselves for a few minutes they say look we have to move forward can I tell you, nobody claps for you for the same thing twice. Once you receive the applause for this level, it's over. If you remain there, you can be sure that you'll be starved of the applause that come with a life that is achieving. You must move forward. You must go forward. Write this down. The next key. Oh dear. If I knew, I would have started with this one. But I pray that God will grant us grace. The power of relationships. All ministers so need to hear this. But I have to just mention it. The power of relationships. Genesis 1 and verse 1 to 4. And then the last is the prophetic advantage. These are the keys. These last two, they are really, really very important. But another time. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at one scripture and we pray. Genesis chapter 12, the first four verses. As we prepare to pray. We will rise in your name. Adonai, you reign on That's what is happening to you. I will rise in your name. Adonai. The Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of your country, your kindred, your father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Next verse. We are showing the power of relationships. And I will make of thee a great nation. It says, I will bless you, make your name great, you will be a blessing. Verse 3. The Bible says, I will bless them that bless you, curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Read verse 4 if you are a Christian. Ready? One to read. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken. Uh -huh. And Lot went with him. Stop. God did not call Lot. He called Abraham. And spoke a prophetic word. That as you obey me. And Lot had it. He said, who is this talking to you? I am going with you. 13 verse 5 let me borrow two minutes my spirit is fired up 13 and verse 5 i have to land on this note the bible says and also lot which went with abraham had what he was not called he was not sent he only followed someone who was moving forward and the bible says as a result he also had flocks and herds and tents next verse and the land was not able to bear them both the one that was called and the one who connected through relationship they had such abundance and influence their substance was so great so that they could not dwell together watch this a lesson that i will end with and there was a strife between the herdsmen of adam's of abram's cattle and the herdmen of lord's cattle and the canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt in the land verse 8 tragic thing and abraham said unto lot let there be no strife i pray thee between me and thee and between my herdmen and thy herdmen for we be brethren nine it says it's not the whole land before thee separate thyself lot had become so great he was not wise to discern that the reason why he increased was not because the anointing was on him was because he had a relationship and now abraham said since you could not mentor your people to know why the blessing comes to you let there be no strife you can go separate yourself i pray thee from me if thou will take the left hand i will go to the right if thou will take the right i will go to the left abraham is saying it does not matter is what is on me for you oh anyone help that man please help him help him please verse 10 and lord the foolishness of those who follow let this be a lesson men of god there are times that god connects you to people 
not just as a mentor not just as a father there are covenant relationships that god brings you through your lifting is connected to it you must look beyond the weaknesses and the limitations of the people and stay there because your covenant alignment is how you are blessed don't now think because you are wearing a gucci he's wearing a gucci you preach is preaching your prophesying is prophesying champions know what they did that made them great they will tell you go but when they tell you go you are not going alone you are going with a plethora of troubles the bible says look at the first time he was going to make a decision alone outside of the influence of his relationship and see how foolish that means his wealth was not a proof of his wisdom it was a proof of his relationship now here is a man who prospered you would think the wisdom was his own now he was left to make a decision alone and here's where he chose and lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the lord destroyed sodom and gomorrah even as the garden of eden and like the land of egypt and you know as he has come to zoa next verse please quickly lord chose the plain chose him all the plain of jordan and lord journeyed east and they separated themselves from one and from the other verse 12 the bible says and abraham dwelled in the land of canaan and lot went dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards by the time abraham will come to rescue lot where was he he went to settle near trouble he went to settle near pain he went to settle near deception because he could not see but thank god for the power of fathers and leaders you know the thing with fathers is that there is grace to take a lot of nonsense even when they tell you go away look at the prodigal son he didn't meet his father in the house when he was leaving the father too left his house they met on the way for some of you this may be a message god has placed a man of god above you when you came to this church you probably had nothing but you kept listening to the word now you have a great car now you have a great firm be careful do not make the mistake of lot this is not human worship is how the kingdom functions and lot went with him go in this your might rise up on your feet prayer point number one now that you know these things it says happy are you if you do them lift your voice and obtain grace from god grace to walk in keeping with these truths grace to walk in keeping with these truths a man of god is praying a leader in this house is praying go in this thy might go on the strength of this information do exploits. Your life is changing. You will never be the same. The power of vision. You will never be the same. The power of light. High level spiritual illumination. Go ahead and pray. The power of a transformed mind sustaining superior belief systems the power of value and productivity the power of destiny connections strategic relationships and alliances hallelujah the last key you may write it no time to explain but it's called the prophetic advantage hosea chapter 12 and verse 3 as i speak over your life Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and 13. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. The prophetic advantage is a system of advantage built into God's economy to help people rise. Prophecy is powerful. It can create and program possibilities over the life of an individual i stand in faith with pastor larry over the house on the rock port Arcot, over the south south ministers here present and following online over the body of christ within this region and in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god 
I declare that anything that will not let you go I declare that it goes down now it goes down now in the name of Jesus I speak to you everyone who has been ordained to hold your hands and lift you in the next season of your life in ministry and in business I speak to the north the south the east and west of this region I command them to appear now in the name of Jesus Christ hear me everything that has died or is dying in your life I send a prophetic word to that which is dead Talita Kumi come back to life now come back to life now when Paul and Silas prayed and sang there was an earthquake and the Bible says and all doors open not some doors I want to open doors by the spirit of grace I stand by the unction of him that holds the key of David who opens a door that no man shuts and shuts a door that no man's open every door needed to be opened in this season for your destiny for ministry that has been shot by witchcraft shot by men systems and structures we speak to those doors and those gates a father be open a father be open a father doors of ministry doors of family doors of business a father be open in the name of jesus help them please let me declare restoration some of you have lost money some of you have lost relationships you have lost things you've lost destiny opportunities the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say yet restore i come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i declare whatever has left you i call it by name and i command it to return back to your destiny please believe return back to your destiny hallelujah now listen to me there are two people in the bible who solved problems and were forgotten one of them was joseph he solved the problem of the wine presser he said please when you go to the king tell him i'm not here because i was supposed to be here and he forgot him the next person was mordecai he saved the life of the king and yet nothing happened but my bible says that night could not the king sleep and the king said bring me the chronicles they opened a book of remembrance many of you have helped people you prayed for them you advised them you supplied value you were part of the lifting and the rising of many and they have forgotten about you i stand by the spirit of grace and prophecy tonight let the book of remembrance be open for you open for your family open for your ministry in the name of jesus we're wrapping up hear me exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 the bible says and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty there is a grace for favor there truly is a grace for favor Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the B part says and Esther obtained favor favor works with the power of sight she obtained favor in the sight of how many all them that looked upon her verse 17 not even the king could resist this anointing the Bible says and the king loved Esther more than all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight and he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Esther I pray for you the Esther anointing the oil that Haggai gave Esther to rub on her body for one year before she would stand before Ahasuerus may that grace come upon your life now May that grace come upon your ministry now. Hallelujah.
one time Saul the son of Kish had their donkey missing and he took his servant and they began to journey to look for Samuel to look for the donkey they could not find the donkey and they said there is a holy man of God and when they came and he met this strange prophet called Samuel Samuel said rise up and I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started going back home when he met him he said is it not because the Lord has anointed and ordained you to be captain over his army he said three signs that you have been anointed number one that which was missing that you've been looking for is now restored number two when you are passing you will see three men who are holding bread they will salute you and they will give it to you number three you will come to the garrison of the philistines and the spirit of god will come upon you and you will prophesy let me declare to you again everything that has left you you've tried to look for it you could not find it like prophet samuel i stand here on this exalted altar and i declare return back and see it waiting for you number two the kind of honor you have never seen listen you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another honor is a grace he told moses call joshua in whom the spirit is on and anoint him he said take some of your honor and place upon him honor is transferable in the name that is above all names shame and reproach that has plagued you and your family for a long time i stand in agreement with pastor and we declare take the mantle of honor upon your life take the mantle of honor let shame and reproach come to an end in the name of jesus christ finally let me pray for your prayer life and your word study life it says grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge we must become students of scripture we must become students of prayer it says my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of robbers and your body is that house so either you are a house of prayer or you are a place that satan will come and steal from you have to choose one if you are not a house of prayer then you become a place where